Hey guys, it's Danny. So you might remember that a while back I received some Miltoniopsis and Nelly Eiler to finally try it out. And I was telling you that I have a plan in my mind to make them actually survive. And today I'm going to talk about my little setup, which is still in trial and error period actually, but we have to start somewhere. So in case you didn't figure it out, it's a mini greenhouse. It's one of those plastic greenhouses on a frame that you usually find in garden centers, home improvement stores and so on. Now the purpose of this greenhouse is to keep things warm. However, I'm trying to use it in the other direction and keep things rather cool and of course moist or rather humid. Inside I've placed my Miltoniopsis Nelly Eiler and a few very sick orcas that I have. We'll go through them in a minute. Also inside I placed my humidifier and a fan. Now I know some of you will know this is not the way to place a fan in a mini greenhouse. You need to put it up and create a draft with the air underneath. Yes, I wanted to do that. I wanted to cut a portion of the sides and place the fan there. However, if I do that, all the humidity from the humidifier will just go out and I will not have any humidity in the lower layers. So for now, I am trying this thing out. So what the fan does, it gets air from outside because if you notice, I raised a portion of the greenhouse there so the fan can actually drag some air from outside inside and create a sort of a swirl. If you look at the mist of the humidifier, you will notice it kind of circles and it actually falls down to the lower layers as well. So for now, I'm trying this out. There is ventilation inside because the fan blows on the front side and it creates a sort of a storm. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Anyway, there is ventilation inside, there is humidity. For now, I am keeping it like that. I don't want to ruin this greenhouse and cut it and then figure out it's not working. So I'll just leave it as it is until I decide it's not working and I'm just gonna go and chop the greenhouse. But anyway, right now I have 86% humidity and 21 degrees Celsius. Now, as I was saying, I'm trying to keep this greenhouse on the cooler side because I do want to grow cool growing orchids that require humidity as well. And how I lower the humidity is actually by the use of the ceramic pots. As I was saying in a previous video, they benefit from evaporative cooling. Clay pots are very porous, water seeps out and then it starts to evaporate very fast and as it does so, it actually decreases the temperature of the clay pot and inevitably the air around the clay pot, which is then ventilated with the fan and practically it lowers the temperature in the greenhouse. For that though, I do need a few more clay pots. Three will now make practically any difference except on the first layer, but overall they will not make a lot of difference. I need to place more clay pots, more orchids and so on. But for now it is a decent temperature, it's intermediate. So Miltoniopsis Nelly Eilers can do great in this and also if you have some sick orchids it's not that low of a temperature so you can actually keep them there as well. It's a middle ground for now. And this is the setup right now, so I'll open the door and shut down the humidifier so you can see better what's going on. So here's an inside look. As you can see, my Miltoniopsis are not in the best shape. They did not fare well with 10 days on transport. Nelly Eiler was already a bit sick when I received it. Anyway, this is a sort of an ICU for the time being. But we do have the Nelly Eiler and the Miltoniopsis in clay pots and ceramis. I went for the smaller granulated ceramis because these orchids do have fine roots and also they like to stay moist so I think this option is better than the chunkier ones actually. We'll see how it does. So I chose this setup because I really don't want to disturb them every X amount of years to repot them and so on. Miltoniopsis Nelly Eilers, as you might know, they're kind of finicky. They don't bounce back all that fast and so on. So I'm trying to limit how much I actually disturb them. Of course, clay pots because they are cool and I would like to keep their roots cool and also the ceramics will not overheat either because it's clay. So overall, I have a pretty cool environment right next to their root system and next to the plants. So first and foremost, I thought about these orchids when I created the setup, not any other type of orchid. But for now, as I was saying, it holds other sick orchids as well. And here are the sick orchids. This is a Cattleya which has no roots. It's a very tiny seedling division actually. She's very fragile. So I decided to keep her here because it's a lot more moist and I'm trying to limit transpiration and water loss. She has a new growth without any type of roots, but it's growing. I notice it's growing. So hopefully this will help. I'm not sure if it will make it, but I think this is the best I can provide. Now in the back we have the um, Bulbophyllum barbigerum. 
He's not doing all that great. He does love moisture. And you might notice he's not potted in ceramics. There is a good reason for that. So ceramics is great. I love it. However, it is chunky. And for orchids which have, let's say, tiny, tiny new roots or almost no roots, it doesn't give that super wet sogginess I'm looking for at the top. So if the orchid is raised above it, it will not necessarily touch the roots. It will not provide that moisture that sphagnomoss actually provides. It's really hard to explain, but I'll try. So I needed something more fluffy, something that will provide aeration, but also if it touched the roots, it would immediately soak them. And so far, Synthic is actually a good option. You might remember I did a video on Synthic. If you missed it, if you don't know what the heck this is, just check the annotation right here on the screen. You'll learn what it is and what's used for. Anyway, the Barbigerum didn't fare well on transport, so I'm trying this right now. And in front right here, we have a Cattleya. Oh my goodness, she suffered a lot. It's again a small division from Ana Maria. You might know her, as I was saying, she's not gonna make it probably, but I'm willing to give it a try because she's still holding on. So all her older pseudobulbs are depleted. They're not rotten. This is depletion right here. Well, now that they're dead, they will rot. This is why I cut most of them and I just let one, but it has a new growth right here. And this new growth actually has tiny, tiny little roots. It will be a miracle if this one survives without her mother's pseudobulbs, but I'm willing to give it a go. So until now I kept it in water, but here's the problem. When you keep an orchid in water, you do keep her hydrated, yes, but you waterlog the roots and they're not gonna be the happiest. And this uh, girl was sitting in water just to keep her hydrated because as soon as I remove her from water, she's gonna die. She does not have any backup storage devices, as you can see. That's why I kept her in water. However, the stubby little roots are not growing. They're not doing anything and they look waterlogged to me. They do, just because they don't breathe. So that's why I'm trying the Synthic method right now. Provide aeration and also a lot, a lot, a lot of moisture at the same time. It's a tricky balance that I believe is beneficial for her in this stage. We shall see, I don't know. It's just an experiment. Anyway, so here we have the Stanhopia, which lost a lot of her growth in the transport, but now she's producing new growth with new roots. Same problem with this one. She needs a lot of hydration, but also air, because I don't want to water love the roots. She also has a few good roots right here. And the fact that this is so fluffy and so moist, only by the fact that it touches the roots, it actually keeps them hydrated and not waterlogged. And in the back, we have the uh, Selogeny Pandurata. You might remember I was telling you that she's not doing all that well once again because of the move. So again, I was keeping her in water, but the roots looked very waterlogged. She was hydrated, but waterlogged. And if I can, I want to try to save the roots. And this is what I'm trying right here with the Synthic. Once again, same principle, keeping them extremely moist, but ventilated at the same time. And of course, with the added humidity from this chamber for the leaves to reduce transpiration and so on. So this is the setup, you guys. I'm not sure how this will pan out. I'm curious to see, but of course I'll keep you updated. Now in the future, what I envision for this setup is a place where I can grow Miltoniopsis, of course, and Nelly Eilers, but also I so want to have some Draculas and Mastavalias. And if this is the way to grow them, then this is the way to grow them. But the good thing is, this stuff is not expensive. You can find it anywhere, you can order it. I paid 30 euros for it. Yeah, it's not the cheapest thing, but overall it's not such a big investment. If it will mean that we can grow Mastavalias and Draculas in a home. Because this thing, you can absolutely put it in a home if you find the place for it. And depending on what I find, you might actually not need a humidity fire if you have a lot of clay pots and water and you know to provide that moisture right now I don't that's why I still use the humidifier but if you do have a humidifier then that's great so that's the purpose of this thing to not overheat not be very hot right here have ventilation and have a lot of moisture and humidity and if it works it will mean that we can grow Mastavalias and all of those cool growers humid cool growers in our house won't that be great? Or at least you can use the setup to actually save those really, really sick orchids you really want to save. And on that bombshell, I'll see you guys next time and I'll keep you updated with this whole setup and how it's going. If it fails, if it's not, we're just gonna see. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and it gave you some ideas to experiment or to improve upon, why not? 
Leave me your comments down below if you have questions or suggestions for videos or for the setup and so on. Also subscribe to my channel for daily orchid videos, of course, updates and maybe new stuff and new plants and new orchids. And always feel free to drop me a letter at the address you see on the screen right now and in the description below. If you click on the left side of your screen, you're gonna be directed to orchidnature.com where you'll find care sheets, identification sheets and also you can talk to us in the forum section. And on the right side of your screen, you can click to watch another orchid video. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. Bye.